We continue our discussion looking at how Mauritius has embarked on a growth program to be a leading financial center for the region and enhancing its competitiveness as a global business platform. Joining us for more on this is Adamasu Tadese, CEO at PTA Bank. Uh, Mr. Tadese, thank you so much for joining us. Firstly, congratulations on your new offices. And I also understand that in a few weeks, uh, the bank will be celebrating 29 years since its existence. Let's take a quick reflection back uh, in light of that. What do you think uh, is the biggest mark that the bank has made on the African landscape thus far? Well, you know, PTA Bank has been performing uh, very well in recent years. This past uh, two years have been outstanding. We've uh, done a great deal of infrastructure financing in the areas of uh, power, telecoms, uh, helping to build backhaul systems in landlocked countries, connecting to the undersea cables, uh, doing uh, very important infrastructure work. And uh, of course, we've gone beyond infrastructure to support agribusiness and trade finance in general to ensure that Africa can trade more with itself, but also have robust, reliable partners to facilitate the export as well as import requirements of the countries of the region. So the bank has been uh, dispersing close to $10 billion over the past uh, 29 years. Uh, a lot of it has been in trade finance, very diversified. And, uh, and recently, of course, we've been doing a great deal on the infrastructure side. Uh, as a result, our balance sheet is exceeding $2 billion now. We're uh, seeing returns on equity now of close to 14% on average, over 10% now for five years. So it's been uh, you know, an, ex an exceptional journey for us. We're very pleased with what we've managed to, to achieve so far. Of course, you have been at the helm of, uh, the, uh, of the bank now for close to 18 months, if I'm not mistaken. Can you give us your insights over, over the last 18 months about the biggest trends uh, coming out of the continent relating to trade finance? Well, yes, you know, the past 18 months have been very exciting uh, times for the bank. We've uh, embarked on a new strategy, on a new plan. We've launched it. We've begun the implementation. Uh, there's been a lot of reform in terms of the repositioning of the bank in a number of ways. But of course, we've done all this repositioning and strategy work while keeping our eye on the ball, ensuring that we are delivering today, uh, ensuring that our performance uh, does not uh, you know, slow down in any particular way. So our results have just come out for 2012, which was my first year, and it's been an outstanding year, I'm pleased to say. We had 35% year-on-year growth uh, for the balance sheet, and of course, profitability has been up by almost 50%. We had record levels of recoveries. We've also managed to diversify our business. We've penetrated new markets. We've launched new products. It's been a very, very energetic uh, 18 months. The team and, and I have been uh, pushing very hard and uh, the results are, have been very good actually. So let's quickly look at uh, one of the really interesting things about PTA and, and particularly the, the, the shareholder status of China, the only non-African member at uh, this particular stage. Um, given uh, the, the African growth story right now, do you foresee other non-African players seeking membership in the bank to make sure that they get greater exposure to African markets? Uh, yes, in fact, uh, that's, that was a very interesting subject of discussion at our recent annual general meeting, which took place in Addis Ababa in September, on September the 13th. And um, the board of governors representing 18 African countries plus the People's Republic of China and the African Development Bank considered the strategy that we put forward and we've identified a number of new countries uh, to invite to come into the bank and the new countries include Brazil, includes Russia, includes India, it includes Malaysia, includes uh, Turkey, South Korea, Japan, and uh, the Gulf countries as well. And so there's been a very strong reflection uh, on the partnerships that Africa wants to have in the context of our bank. And of course, our bank has been growing very vigorously, over 30% per annum now consistently for several years. And so with the profitability being very high, with our quality of assets being very high, we believe that the time has come for us to open up a little bit more, bring in fresh capital, and at the same time build new partnerships with, 
with parts of, of the world, both uh, south and north, that are willing to uh, do more with our region in, the, in terms of trade and infrastructure financing as well as agribusiness. Before I let you go, um, very quickly, where is South Africa right now in terms of the membership conversation? Um, I heard you rattle off a list uh, and in fact touching on the whole BRICS grouping with the exception of South Africa. Is South Africa likely to be a, a member in the near future? Well, you know, South Africa is part of the region, so South Africa is actually uh, eligible to join. So the countries that we discussed were non-African countries. So South Africa has always been a partner for the bank. We already do a lot of business with South African institutions. Uh, my former institution, of course, the DBSA, is a strong partner, the IDC. And more importantly, now we've built very strong relations with uh, Standard Bank, First National Bank, Rand Merchant Bank in particular, and also the PIC. And so we're, there's a whole range of very strong financial partnerships we've built with, with South Africa. So South Africa, for all intents and purposes, is actually already uh, in the bank in terms of substance. And so we, we're really talking about non-Africans at this point in time.